I'm going to read the call to worship, and then uh, let that be our, our call into worship. From 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Peace with God through faith. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. morning, which is from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, and we are beginning at verse 20, where we read, But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she gave birth to a son, and they called his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Please pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with such grateful hearts, knowing that you brought redemption. And we thank you, Lord, that you sent your Holy Spirit here. And we just can't, can't uh, praise you enough this day, for worthy is the Lamb. And Lord, this day we just ask uh, that you bring your healing touch to us, you bring your presence to us today, for we just long to know you more, to walk with you more, and we pray for the strength this day to love you more in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. This morning I'm going to sing a song. It's a little lullaby, and um, we sing a lot of beautiful songs this time of year about the Jesus and when he was born. But when I hear this song, it really hits me as a mom. It makes me think of Mary's experience in holding her newborn son. He's our Lord and Savior. He's our King of Kings. He's our Lord of Lords. And he's, our, he's the Son of God. 
but he was also Mary's firstborn son. And that's a pretty big deal to a mom. Imagine that first night when she's holding him. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and she heard his first cry. And as she rocked him, and as the scriptures say, she treasured these things in her heart. night is over and the stars
Merry Christmas. I thought maybe you guys were going to like on a delay there for a second. I was like, whoa, <laughs> the AV problems have just kind of like transported to the crowd too. Oh, man. Hey, um, man, I'm super excited about Christmas and, uh, and I love getting together to, with you. And so a huge, huge thank you to everybody who's helping make um, our Advent and Christmas celebrations special. We really appreciate Doing all right? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it was a good thought while it lasted. That's right. Uh, if you, you ever feel like things are just not exactly working out right, Gary? Finding Gary in a Vikings jersey <laughs> seems like he knows exactly what that means when things are just not going right. <laughs> Gary being in a Vikings jersey seems like the whole world's not going right when you're wearing that jersey. <laughs> Unless you're a Vikings fan, right Smith? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> Gary, you're being generous because you haven't said anything about the Giants yet. <laughs> That's what I get for being a Giants fan. Um, if you have your Bibles with you today, Turn with me to Luke chapter 2, and we get a little glimpse into how much the birth of Jesus was, hey, things aren't going exactly right. It's like things were just like kind of really hard. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1, reading in Jesus' name. In those days... A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, um, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Here is the reading of God's Word. If you want the rest of the text, come back tonight, and we're going to have uh, message part two later on. Uh, part one is, is uh, part one of this Christmas message is that, that sometimes things just don't feel like they're going right. You find yourself in a Vikings jersey. Actually, this shirt this morning. So, like, I had planned to wear this shirt this morning, and uh, I get it on. Uh, you know, I was running a little bit behind. I get in um, to the bathroom, and just something is just wonky with this collar. <laughs> and it, all morning, I have just been, like, trying to get the collar. I tried, then I was like, okay, I'm just going to throw my blazer on because my blazer's in, in the office on my little coat rack, and so I throw my blazer on, and I don't know what happened, but like one whole sleeve is like covered in like dust or something, and I'm like, wonky collar or dirty jacket. Something just seems like it's just not going right. When... Um, Occasionally, you just when things aren't going right for like a little while, you have this sense that, you know what? Couldn't it just go easy? Couldn't it just go easy for like a day? Just, just a day? Just a week or something? You know, couldn't we just have a, like an easy season where this could like just kind of smooth out a little bit? When we were in, living in Rhode Island, and it happened like multiple times, we're living in Rhode Island, we put the, like, the nativity thing out in front of the church, it looks all good, you know, you got the little, like, you know, kind of shack looking stable thing, and you've got the, you know, the, 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 you know, the Mary and Joseph up there, we did a little something with the nativity last week, I still have hay up here, apparently, um, and, and, and I, and it just, 
So we got the, the nativity is all out in front. And then right before Christmas, right before Christmas, someone stole Jesus. That's exactly what Heidi was thinking about last week when, when Jesus was glued in, you know? <laughs> it wasn't just our church either. Like, my, my buddy at Faith Presbyterian, somebody stole his Jesus too. And my buddy, Father Ron, somebody stole his Jesus too. I was like, everybody who I talked to and their nativities, it was like somebody was going around stealing Jesus. You think to yourself, A, you're stealing from a church. B, you are stealing Jesus. And as a church, we're like, really? Really? First time, it really caught me off guard. The second year, that's when I really got upset. I'm like, come on! I wanted to, like, I don't know, like, stake out the nativity or something like that. One of my elders was like, what are you going to do if you catch someone stealing Jesus? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Say, no, you can't have Jesus. He's my Jesus. <laughs> He's like, that's not going to work out well for anybody. That's the thing is that sometimes like, just life is not going easy and you say to yourself, well, how is this going to work out? I, I, I wonder if Mary was thinking the exact same thing. Why can't it just go easy? She gets this great message from the angels. Hey, beloved of God, you found favor with God. You're going to have a son, the son of God. That's awesome. But he comes early, like before the wedding. And then it just gets harder. I mean, how hard does it have to be for her? I mean, what is she going to say to everybody? Oh, no, 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 it wasn't me. I, was, like, I wasn't stepping out on, on, on Joseph. No, 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 no. I didn't sleep with anybody else. No, no, really. No, Joseph and I didn't get together before the wedding day. No, no, no. Really, it's the Son of God. You're going to tell everybody that it's the Son of God in your belly? Because totally everybody's going to buy that one. Couldn't it go easier? Pregnant. Not married. Joseph, you know, your husband-to-be is thinking about bailing on you and just kind of doing it quietly so that you don't get stoned to death. Because that would really be a lot harder. And then the new Roman emperor, Augustus, who's in charge of like the entire world. I mean, it was, okay, I'm prone to exaggeration, right? But he really was. Like from Spain to India, from Britain to Africa, from even Eastern Europe, all the way down to Egypt, Augustus conquered the whole thing. And the only thing that he loves more than conquering countries is taxes. Oh, he loves taxes. Everybody getting taxed. Spain's getting taxed. Egypt's getting taxed. Everybody getting taxed. And so if everybody's going to get the tax, we've got to know exactly how many people are there. And so this brand, this great emperor who's taken over our country and every other country between here and Rome says it's time for a road trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem while I'm nine months pregnant. She would have traveled approximately 90 miles on foot. I know it's super romantic to think of her like kind of hanging out on the donkey, like sitting like side saddle or something like that, you know, like. <laughs> but if they had enough money for a donkey, <laughs> they would have had a room in Bethlehem. <laughs> it's 
So chances are, probably no donkey, whole lot of walking, 90 miles, nine months pregnant. Why can't it go a little bit easier than that? And then when you're just, you're waiting for things just, just to catch your break, for it just to be just a little bit easy, you finally get to Bethlehem and nobody's got room for you. I don't know what's going on with like Joseph and his, and his extended family or something like that, but like I would think like even if you weren't close, right? Even if it's super crowded because of the census and everything, and every, I, we get it, everybody's coming back to town, but she's pregnant. Like, come on. Like, who doesn't? Who doesn't make a little room in their house for a pregnant lady? That's nuts. But that's what happened. They go to the inn, there's no room there. They go to, you know, they end up in the stable. When's it gonna when's it gonna get easier? It's hard. Why has it got to be so hard? What about you? Do you ever feel like that? But why has it got to be so hard? This life. Can't we have it easy for just like a day or a week? When's it going to get easier? You ever feel like that? A little. But in the midst of all of that hard stuff, and even in the midst of all of our hard stuff, God gives hope. And hope gives way and brings joy with it. And along with joy, we remember how much we are totally loved. Because God gave his son, Jesus Christ. Little glimmers of hope. Even in the midst of it being so incredibly hard for Mary, she hears from the angel that Aunt Elizabeth is going to have a baby. What? She's like crazy old. I know. It's a miracle. Not like miracle like Mary having a baby, that was miracle, miracle. But like still, Elizabeth, I mean, in her old age, you know, having a baby, that's awesome. And there's got to be some hope there. And sure enough, when she goes to visit, she brings hope to Mary. And ho Mary just walks in the door and Elizabeth is like, praise Jesus. Yeah, Elizabeth and Elizabeth is like, praise Jesus. Jesus, the Savior, is in your belly. I know because the baby in my belly just leaped for joy. Joy? Even in the midst of it being hard, there's these little glimmers of hope and joy. And Zechariah, mute for months since he just totally rejected that angel's message. Zechariah, when his son is born, just points everything to God and glorifies God and says the Savior is going to be born. Oh, he loves us. And so I get it. When it's hard, it's hard. But even in the midst of things being hard, Even when it things like things aren't going right, even when your collar is wonky and there's much bigger things out there than some wonky collar. There's much bigger things out there than Vikings beating the Packers. There's much bigger things going on in our lives that make things just hard. But in the midst of everything, even when it's hard, She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there is no room for them in the inn. In the midst of everything that's hard, if you scoot back up into Luke, 
Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Because of the tender mercy of our God, the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Even in the midst of some really hard times for Mary, she gives birth to Jesus Christ. He is our peace. He is our Savior. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he's here for us too. In the midst of everything, when things are not going the way that you want it to go, and it just doesn't seem like it's going the right way, and you're wondering when could it just go just a little bit easier, in the midst of that, I hope you see little glimmers of hope. Jesus, that you see little glimmers of joy. Maybe you hear those glimmers of joy as, as people sing about Jesus. That you receive peace even in the midst of the, the anxiety of that is Christmas when things are just not working out the way you want it to be working out, that you receive peace. That you know that you are loved by God even when Man, it's really hard to feel it because you know that she gave birth to the Son of God, Jesus, and that he is our Savior in the midst of it all. No matter what you're going through, my hope, my prayer is that you know that Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior, your Savior. And it doesn't stop there. He was born in a manger, but he went from, you know, cradle to cross. He went from servant to savior because he loves us. In the midst of everything that doesn't seem like it's going right, Jesus did everything right for you. And that's a gift. You pray with me? God, you're awesome. Doing everything right according to plan. And I'm sure that Mary didn't feel like traveling all the way down to Bethlehem to give birth. But that fulfilled every pro a promise right from Micah that that your son, the Savior, would be born in Bethlehem. You worked out things that even though they weren't easy at the time, they were right and perfect. And so, Lord God, I pray that you would visit your people, that you would remind us once again that even in the midst when things are not going right, when it feels like somebody stole my Jesus, that you remind us that you're always here, that you love us, and that you're giving us glimpses of hope and joy and peace and love, not just because you were born, but because you died for us and took our place so that you could give us forgiveness. Lord, I pray that every person here has the opportunity to know, to believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God, and that we only have salvation in you. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his, his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. See this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look right at you and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.